Welcome all the distinguished uh, panel and the esteemed participants who have joined us today for this interesting discussion today on a very important theme. Uh, and that has to do with the potential China-Iran economic security deal. There comes a time that there is a change in the power and, and the, the, it, it moves towards imbalance. And tragically, it ends up with a big conflict. I would like uh, to invite Mr. Segal to just few say a few introductory comments and before we go into the discussion. I want to take you back to the session we had almost 10 years ago. You know, and uh, if you remember, uh, I said uh, uh, Pakistan is part of the solution and India is part of the problem. The, the reason is very simple. The reason is Pakistan has a South Asian identity. Pakistan has a Central Asian identity. And Pakistan has a Middle Eastern identity. And today, if you look at uh, the developments that have taken place, this had to happen. When Shah Bahar was coming up, already Iran and Pakistan, despite the differences and despite the fact India was uh, very much in the driving seat at Shah Bahar, we're talking about a road and railway link between Gwadar and Chabahar, and Chabahar and Gwadar as sister ports. Now, as somebody who has been 50 years been associated with uh, the Karakram Highway, because I flew a helicopter in the Karakram Mountains and making the early part of the Karakram Highway, which is actually the most difficult part before it comes down uh, to the plains. You know, we look at the topography. You know, the, prob the point is very simple. It is a natural linkage. Uh, the the China Pakistan Economic Corridor just requires two more connections. The one connection already exists through Zahida, but the other connection will very short distance between Gwadar and you know, which I think is a major problem. And that is that we cannot afford the US from disengaging from this region. We, you know, as much as you know, we are benefiting from China's largest, we are actually uh, really uh, this thing, et cetera. But we cannot uh, you know, sort of lose the engagement in the United States or you know, line up with Iran uh, against Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is uh, absolute uh, vital to our uh, uh, is a vital friend of ours. And, you know, we cannot afford there to take sides. We can act as a good intermediary. We can act as a good intermediary to solve a lot of problems. The more, the more I see it is China is progressively moving westwards uh, with its BRI. And now it's got to, to Iran. And I think before it wants to get involved in the difficult and complicated waters of the Middle East. I think it, China would want to consolidate its big win here with the Iran-China deal. I think this is really, really important, especially as the other speakers have said. I, I personally see this whole Iran-China deal as very much something that would fit very nicely, and we can talk about this later, very nicely with a whole uh, BRI and of course with CPEC uh, next door with Pakistan. I will be, um, you know, I'm surprised that the Saudi uh, or Gulf Arab, uh, Arab states with uh, the United States have been uh, having relations for over 70 years. Uh, and with China, uh, we, started our relation in 1990 after the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait. And uh, 
But surprisingly, as you said, how do you see this? In the 30 years, I think China has eclipsed the United States in terms of the strength of the relationship. Um, uh, in 1990 was the first visit. Uh, uh, until the year 2000, 2005, China was still in the backwaters. We used to get goods and all. But China is beginning to play a great role uh, in the Middle East in terms of trade, in terms of some strategic uh, moves that they have done. Uh, so uh, the, the Gulf states now have to balance their relationship between the United States and China uh, and also act as a platform to see to it that there will not be any uh, transgression by either side. So you have to have very strong diplomacy, you have to have very a, a crafty vision, in fact, to see to it that this doesn't happen. Now, China is a sovereign nation, and I think both before me, Mr. Segal said that the Americans should be there, yes, uh, and I remember that book that uh, President Ayub Khan wrote many years ago, Friends, Not Masters. So she, they should be there as friends and not come in and dictate policy to the area, which they are very gung-ho at doing. Uh, then also Ambassador uh, Mustafa spoke about uh, the need uh, for a greater economic cooperation because China has an inescapable uh, need for oil. The Iranians need all kinds of assistance because due to sanctions, because due to abrupt policies by the United States, uh, the lack of uh, uh, dialogue. Uh, so they are in need. They are, they are a bit suspicious. Uh, so in that sense that both countries should be there. But for sure, the uh, China, Iran, uh, uh, likely agreement is of uh, is, is really of very vast magnitude and will be a major breakthrough for Iran as it will provide much needed relief from the suffocating uh, US sanctions besides other benefits. But before we draw alarming regional and global scenarios, we need to objectively look at the legitimate mutual interest of both Iran and China, whether the prospective deal violates international law, whether the Trump administration's unilateral withdrawal from the nuclear deal and other polarizing actions in the region have in fact facilitated the deal. China is world's largest fossil fuel importer. It gets more than 40% of its oil supplies from the Gulf. Therefore for Iran, China is a key market for its crude oil exports. After Washington's withdrawal from the nuclear deal with Tehran, two years back, Chinese imports from Iran have drastically reduced. China as a co-signatory wants compliance to the deal. Therefore, both for China and Iran, Trump administration's unilateral withdrawal from the UN-endorsed, universally acclaimed nuclear agreement with Iran was a great betrayal and in fact, violation of international law. One thing we are forgetting, and uh, please do remember, that there was a treaty called CENTO, Central Treaty Organization, which used to consist of Pakistan, Iran, and Turkey primarily. And then of course, there's a uh, economic side, which became the Regional Cooperation for Development, RCD, and now which is known as ECO. So we are forgetting the joker in the pack is Turkey. You know, you're talking about, we're talking about Pakistan, and we're talking about Iran, we're talking about uh, China, but Turkey is as aggrieved today, particularly in the light of developments that have taken place, right? I mean, if you can see Turkey is being more assertive, right? And we must not forget that, you know, this is something that a reverse center can happen. I don't know all the details, of course, of the deal, but I suspect that, uh, you know, uh, China is a very, very big country. And, is, and this is why this Iran-China deal was possible in that uh, with the European countries, they got scared with the sanctions and the threat of American sanctions against European countries or European um, you know, uh, entities that do deals with Iran, they could be threatened. 
China does not have to worry about that. Look at the past and history, really the conflicts come first. Uh, and I'm worried and I hope that in this case, we are able to see the economic benefits first and we don't inadvertently end up in a conflict.